So you would have had to clear the tree, then drop down, and you only have about 1,500 feet left. It's a foggy day in the Cascade foothills. Sean Murphy and Lee Corbin, two men with a passion for aviation history, have returned here once again to honor two Navy flyers. Here is Black Lake. It's a tiny body of water on private timberland, off limits to the public, and east of the Snoqualmie Valley town of Carnation. The story actually begins 20 miles away, as the crow flies, at the old Sandpoint Naval Air Station on Lake Washington. It was there at what's now Magnuson Park, where two young naval aviators, 23-year-old Ensign Gaston Mays and 25-year-old Lieutenant Junior Grade Benjamin Vreeland, took off on March 11, 1949. The two were flying a World War II era trainer known as an SNJ-5 Texan. And they departed at 10.05 on that morning just to go out to the east and do some flying around for maybe an hour and a half, two hours, something like that. They made one radio call after they departed, and that was the last that anybody had heard from them after that. Well, frankly, they searched for 10 days, the normal 10-day pattern of searching up and down the, the western Washington from the water to the mountains north-south is it seemed like no one really zeroed in on that area, even though the loggers had come out and stated what they had seen. That area was Black Lake. For years, the mother of Gaston Mays, one of the lost flyers, traveled from her Tennessee home to the Northwest to search for her son. Then in 1953, she got a letter from a ranger who had found suspicious debris in Black Lake, encouraging news to Nora Mays. So each summer, she returned to search for her boy, her mother's love and devotion kept her coming back for 19 consecutive years. But the plane and the two men were never found. Nora Mays visited for the final time in 1969. She died in 1983. It was obviously the, the ongoing story of Nora throughout the years when I was looking through the newspaper clippings. For me, I think it was more that these two naval aviators had kind of been forgotten about. Mm. Just because they couldn't be found I didn't feel it was right that they should be totally forgotten. After meeting a few years ago through their shared interest in the lost plane, Lee Corbin and Sean Murphy revived the search effort. They tracked down family members of both men and kept them updated on their progress. Nora May's son even trusted Lee Corbin with all of his mom's research files. And they got help from the Maritime Archaeological Society to search the lake one more time. We then went out with a magnetometer that could read 18 inches under the mud, and we hit on some anomalies. The divers went down, they stuck their hands all the way to their neck. They were not able to find an end to the mud in their probe. Though they couldn't locate the plane, Corbin and Murphy contacted the Naval History and Heritage Command, the part of the Navy that keeps records of lost vessels and planes. They shared what Nora Mays had found and a new analysis from the Maritime Archaeological Society. Their hard work and determination paid off. In late 2020, more than 70 years after the men disappeared, the Navy officially recognized Black Lake as their likely final resting place. All military personnel and servicemen, please face the flags. In May 2021, with help from the American Legion post in nearby Snoqualmie, a monument to the two lost flyers was dedicated at Black Lake. Dan Vreeland, nephew of lost flyer Benjamin Vreeland, came all the way from Texas for the ceremony. I've been trying to do research on this for years. The amount of information that I've been given in the past two years, I just, my whole family is just blown away. And I, I, I can't say thank you enough. And I'd like to say thank to each and every one of you for what you've done for us. The Mays family wasn't able to attend the monument dedication. And neither was Dan's sister, Isabel Hoverman, niece of lost flyer Benjamin Vreeland. This gave Sean Murphy and Lee Corbin, and Dan and Isabel, one more reason to return to Black Lake on that foggy day in November. Well, if you think about the fact that I'm the only person that actually met Ben, I was three years old the last time he was with family. Thanks to a group called Cascade Warbirds and with help from pilots John Smokey Johnson and Stan Kasperzik, an SNJ-5 Texan, just like the one flown by the missing men, paid tribute to the families with a series of memorial flyovers. It's so loud, it's yeah. no wonder people heard. 
to me, I mean, I've seen plenty of SNJs at air shows and up close and stuff, but to see one fly over the lake where my uncle's in his SNJ still, possibly, it's, it's you can't quite explain it. It's the end of a story. Yeah. A story that we've heard about since we were kids because of all of these amazing people. Yeah, every it's, one of them. It, you we've, too. we've got the answer to the story. It's great. Watch City Stream Tuesday nights at 7 on the Seattle Channel or find us anytime online at seattlechannel.org.